Hey guys, Frank Schaller here. Welcome back to Nursing 220. You guys made it past the midterm. Nice work. I'm very proud of you guys. Keep up the awesome work. This week, we're going to be diving into arguably some of the most important health assessment systems. We're talking about the respiratory system. We're talking about the cardiac system and also peripheral vascular and lymphatic system. So I'm back. You guys might notice something new about me. And hey, I have my friend here too. I've got Mr. Dummy. So let's jump right into the respiratory assessment. So first things first, I am looking at the posterior chest on Mr. Dummy here. And what, what I'm doing is I'm inspecting the back. And when I'm inspecting the back, I'm just looking at the back. Do I see any obvious deformities, any other abnormalities when inspecting the back? Next, you are going to be palpating the posterior chest. So what I'm going to do here is simply put my fingers together on the chest, and I'm going to ask the patient to take in a deep breath. Mr. Dummy, can you take in a deep breath for me? Great. Normal finding here is equal chest expansion bilaterally, and I noted that here on Mr. Dummy. Next, I'm going to teach you guys about tactile fremitus, and I'm going to do the demonstration. So starting at the top of your patient's posterior chest, you're going to ask the patient to say the number 99, or maybe you're going to ask the patient to say the acronym EMU. So Mr. Dummy, go ahead and say EMU every time you feel my hands touch your back. EMU, EMU. Okay, and a normal finding here would be feeling less intense vibrations as you come down the chest. Next, we are going to talk about percussing the lung fields. So percussing the lung fields, the technique for percussion is you're going to place your hand over the lung field, and you might be wondering where exactly is the lung field. So it's going to be in between the spine and the scapula on both sides. So there's an alley of percussion here on each side of the patient's posterior chest. So starting on this alley, I'm gonna place my hand over and my right knuckle, approximately right here, this is where I'm gonna be tapping with my finger, okay? So I have my hand over, I've got my knuckle over my middle finger right there, and I'm tapping. And I'm coming down that alley of percussion, and I want to compare to both sides. And I am getting resonant findings on both sides of the patient. So resonance noted bilaterally. If you do notice that there's any dullness, this could represent an abnormality such as a pneumonia, maybe a mass like cancer as well. Next, I'm going to be auscultating the breath sound. So I've got my handy dandy stethoscope here auscultating the posterior chest. Mr. Dummy, when you feel my stethoscope touch your back, I want you to take in a big breath and blow it out afterwards. Okay, ready? Here we go. And notice how I'm working side by side in a systematic fashion, comparing each side. And I want to be sure that I get the lateral lung fields as well. And luckily for Mr. Dummy, he has normal breath sounds. His breath sounds are clear. They're equal bilaterally. I don't notice any adventitious lung sounds whatsoever, such as bronchi, wheezes, crackles, things of that nature. Moving on to the anterior chest. So I'm going to go ahead and turn Mr. Dummy around here. I know you all missed his beautiful, handsome, stunning face. There he is. Might not be wearing the right shirt. I should get an EMU shirt for him. But hey, we, we may do with what we had. So I'm inspecting the anterior chest now. And when I'm inspecting the anterior chest, everything appears normal. It's equal. He has unlabored expansion and breathing as well. And I don't notice any abnormalities when assessing his chest here. So I don't notice any barrel chest or things of that nature. Sometimes we see barrel chest in our COPD patients. Next, I'm gonna auscultate the breath sounds anteriorly. And again, I'm gonna be comparing side to side and I'm not gonna forget the lateral sides. Lateral sides.
Excellent. And again, luckily for Mr. Dummy, his breath sounds are clear and they are equal bilaterally. I don't notice any adventitious lung sounds whatsoever. Moving on down to the cardiac exam. So in this circumstance, we're going to start by inspection. So I'm inspecting the precordium. And you might be wondering, what's the precordium? The precordium is this general area of the upper chest where the heart is situated. So I'm inspecting the precordium. I'm noting any abnormalities. And luckily, I'm not seeing any abnormalities whatsoever. I'm going to palpate the PMI. And in order to palpate the PMI, you have to locate it first. So we know the PMI is located at the fifth intercostal on the left-hand side, mid-clavicular. So left-hand side of my patient, mid-clavicle. I'm going to palpate down to the fifth rib. And I'm going to know that the PMI is right at this location. And what I'm doing is palpating the PMI. And I do feel the heartbeat and it seems to be regular and that's it for that part portion moving on down we want to palpate the anterior chest for any thrills or heaves you can do this simply by placing your fingers on the patient's anterior chest and i do not feel any thrills or heaves moving on down i want to auscultate the precordium neck so that's kind of fancy terminology for listening to the heart sounds so thinking about the heart sounds the one acronym that I recommend you guys all memorize is APE to MAN. And this stands for aortic, pulmonic, herbs point, tricuspid, and finally mitral. Okay, so I'm going to say out loud the areas that I'm listening to, and I'm going to let you know my findings afterwards. And be sure to listen to the heart sounds with both the bell and the diaphragm. Aortic, pulmonic, herbs point, tricuspid, and mitral. And guys, I have great news about Mr. Dummy. I heard S1, I heard S2, there were no murmurs, there were no other abnormal sounds whatsoever, and the rate seemed regular. Finally, I'm going to inspect and palpate the carotid pulse and the carotid pulse is located in the neck. First, I'm inspecting, and luckily we can see Mr. Dummy's carotid arteries quite well. So I'm gonna inspect first, and as I'm inspecting, it appears to be a normal rate. And you wanna make sure that you palpate the carotid pulses one side at a time. I don't want to cause Mr. Dummy to pass out on me, have a syncopal episode. I could do that if I palpated both arteries vigorously, I'm not going to do that to him. I like him. Well, I want to keep him around for a little while because I still have some more to teach you guys. So let's palpate the first side on the carotid pulse. And rate is regular. Give him a moment. Check his other side. And again, I note a regular rate. Finally, moving on to the peripheral vascular and the lymphatic systems, part of your assessment for this course. You're gonna to want to inspect the hands, the arms, the legs, and the feet for any type of edema. Edema is fancy word for swelling. And then also any discolorations whatsoever. You're gonna to wanna to check capillary refill. So Mr. Dummy here uh, doesn't have any extremities whatsoever, so it's hard to demonstrate that. But checking capillary refill, all I'm gonna simply do is press down on the nail bed. And you'll see when you let go that it's initially pale for a moment but there should be brisk return of blood flow after letting go. And normal would be that blood flow to return in less than two seconds. So I'm gonna to wanna to do that on at least a few different fingernails on my patient. And I'm gonna hope that I find and verbalize less than two seconds normal capillary refill. Finally, you wanna palpate the pulses. So we have our radial pulse, which is simply just on the thumb side of the extremity near the wrist by the watch. I'm palpating my own radial pulse and feels regular. It's not weak, it's not thready, it's not rapid. And then the posterior tibialis, which is lower down on the ankle. And then finally, the dorsalis pedis, which is on top of the foot. 
So that's it for this week's materials. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, don't hesitate to reach out to me. You guys know I'm here for you. You guys are doing great. Keep up the awesome work and I will talk to you all soon. Talk to you guys next time. Bye-bye.